Very good morning, dear children. Today we are going to see the twentieth lesson. Before that, we shall say the prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Dear children, today we are going to see reaching the age of adolescence. Growing up is a natural process that takes place in all living organisms. All living organisms grow up to maturity, which is the ability to respond to a particular environment. Maturity, along with experiences, produces a progressive series of changes in an organism. These series of change are called development. Different phases of human development are called developmental stages. Human developmental stages include infancy, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, middle age, and old age. Among all these stages, adolescence is the most crucial and significant period in an individual's life. It is the period of transition from childhood to adulthood. This period starts at the age of about 10 to 13 and ends at the age of 19, commonly known as teenage. Almost all of us would have entered this period now. In this lesson, you are going to study about the changes that takes place in you as you enter the age of adolescence. You will also study about the reproductive phases of human life, reproductive health, nutritional need of adolescence and personal hygienic hygiene during adolescence. So, adolescence and puberty, next topic. During this period, changes occur in height, weight, sex organs, muscle mass as well as in brain structure and function. Biologically, it is a physical transition marked by the onset of puberty and termination of physical growth in an individual. What is puberty? Puberty is a period of few years in which rapid physical, physiological and psychological changes occur, resulting in sexual maturity. We can predict the sequence of physical changes that will take place, but the age of beginning puberty, beginning of puberty varies from individual to individual. The average age for the onset of puberty is 10 to 11 for girls and 12 to 13 for boys. But Factors like genetic and biological influences, life events, socio-economical status, nutrition and diet and the amount of body fat also affects the onset and progression of puberty. Hormones plays an important role at the time of puberty. Changes in hormones during this period trigger physical and behavioral changes. Sex hormones secrete, secreted at the time of puberty active the male and female sex organ sex glands to produce necessary secretion in the body the male sex glands testes releases the testosterone and the female sex gland the ovaries releases the estrogen these result in change in the primary and secondary sexual characters characteristics of the male and female body changes at puberty four important changes that occur during puberty transformation the body of a child into that of an adulthood. What are they? Changes in body size, changes in body proportion, development of primary sex characteristics, development of secondary sex characteristics. First one, changes in body size. It usually begins at the age of 10 to 12 in girls and 12 to 13 in boys. It is almost complete at around the age of 17 to 19 in girls and 19 to 20 in boys. During adolescence, both boys and girls add around 23 cm to 26 cm in height. In addition to weight, they also experience significant increase in weight. But increase in weight is influenced by various factors like diet, exercise and lifestyle. The average weight gain during this period is about 17 kg to 19 kg. During this period, increase in fat is seen in girls in contrast to muscle development in boys. Changes in body proportion. Certain body areas which are small proportionally, uh, proportionately grow bigger. This can be seen uh, in feet and hands in other body parts. Primary sex characteristics. Reproductive organs of boys and girls become fully functional at the time of puberty. Length and size of reproductive organs increases. Similarly, female reproductive organ also grows during puberty. Thus, the size of the uterus and the weight of the ovaries increase during this time. Secondary sex characteristics. Secondary sex characteristics are the physical feature which distinguish male from female. 
after the progression of puberty boys and girls become dissimilar in appearances the secondary sex characteristics are regulated by the hormones the testosterone or androgen secreted by the testes of the male and estrogen secreted by the ovaries of the female androgen causes the growth of the larynx muscle development skeletal size and distribution of body and uh, pubic hair and stimulation of sweat glands estrogen and progesterone are the female sex hormones estrogen stimulates the development of axillary hairs and the distribution of body fat secondary sex characteristics of boys first one hair immediately after the development of primary sex characteristics public hair appears below, uh, followed by axillary and facial hair skin the skin becomes porous and the pores is porous in the skin enlarged glands the oil producing glands in the skin enlarge and due to this akin may appear on the faces muscle the strength of the muscle increases and it gives shape to arms legs and shoulders voice during this period voice changes occur and the voice becomes husky then its pitch drop and the volume increases secondary sex characteristics of girls first one hip due to the enlargement of the pelvic bone the hip becomes wider and rounder breast after the enlargement of hip the breasts begin to develop during this time hair public hair appear followed by axillary and body hair on the limbs muscles increase in muscle takes place which gives shapes to the shoulders arms and legs voice becomes shrill and voice breaks are rare, rare among girls skin the skin becomes coarser cor, cor, and the pores enlarge as in the case of boys gland oil producing glands become active causing akin on the faces so there are um, uh, secondary sex characteristics differences comparison for girls and boys has been given in table 20.1 you can go through that table it will be very useful for your examination point of view then you are going to see the role of hormones in reproduction the primary hormones that regulate reproduction are the steroids such as androgen estrogen and progesterone which have masculinizing feminizing and gestational effects respectively in male and female reproductive behaviors and reproduction are mainly under the control of lh luteinizing hormone and fsh follicle stimulating hormone lh stimulates the testes to produce androgen the male sex hormone sperms are then actively produced in man in man sperm production starts at sexual puberty and may continue to throughout his life follicle stimulating hormone fsh fsh in the female influences the development of graafian follicle and the secretion of estrogens in the male it is necessary for the development of semi uh, seminiferous tubules and for the spermatogenesis luteinizing hormone in the female it is the hormone necessary for ovulation and the secretion of the luteinal hormone progesterone and for the final matur maturation of the graafian follicle in the male it stimulates the uh, leudicle cell of testes and the secretion of testosterone prolactin or lactogenic hormone the main function of this hormone is milk secretion during lactation oxytocin hormone oxytocin causes expulsion of milk from the breast and it is also involved in the contraction of smooth muscles of uterus during childbirth reproductive phase of life in human reproduction is more important for the continuation of human race the phase in an individual's life during which there is production of gametes is called reproductive phase in females the reproductive phase of life begins at puberty 10 to 12 years of age and generally lasts till the age of approximately 45 to 50 years in the male it is from the age of 13 to lifelong the reproductive age may vary from person to person the following are the reproductive phases in the life of a female menarche the first the first menstrual flow begins at puberty and is termed menarche the ova begin to mature with the onset of puberty it is the beginning of adolescence during which mental and emotional maturation occur 
ovulation ovulation occurs approximately 14 days before the next ovarian cycle commences thus in a 28 day cycle ovulation occurs about day 14 one ovum mature and is released by one of the ovaries once in about 28 to 30 days the release of ovum from the ovary is called ovulation during this period the wall of the uterus become, becomes thick so as to receive the fertilized egg this, this results in pregnancy pregnancy after ovulation the ovum reaches the fallopian tube and fertilization takes place the fertilized egg undergoes development and it is implemented in the uterus the corpus luteum uh, the corpus luteum continues to grow and produces large amount of progesterone this results in pregnancy Men mensuration if the ov ovum is not fertilized the corpus luteum begins to degenerate and the production of hormones progesterones and estrogen ceases this unfertilized egg and the thickened lining of the uterus along with its blood vessels are shed off this causes bleeding in women's reproduct reproductive tract which is called menstruation. Menstruation occurs once in about 28 to 30 days. It takes about 3 to 5 days. In some cases, initially, menstruational cycle may be irregular. It takes some time to become regular. If it remains irregular for over a year, then it is better to consult a doctor. Menopause. Menopause marks the end of reproductive phase of women's life. At 45 to 50 years of age, the menstruational cycle stops. Stoppage of menstruation is termed as menopause. During menopause, physiological symptoms such as anxiety, sorry, psychological sim symptoms such as anxiety, irritability and loss of concentration may occur. Menopause may be induced by surgical removal of the ovaries or by pelvic irrad irradiation in a woman of any age. Next, menstruation cycle. Menstruation occurs if an ovum released by the ovary of a woman is not fertilized during ovulation. This is described below. When a girl reaches puberty at the age of above 10, the sex hormones releases into her blood causes some of the ova in her ovaries to become mature. Usually, one mature ovum is released from one of the ovaries into the oviduct once in every 28 days. This is called ovulation. Before ovulation, the inner wall of uterus becomes thick and spongy and full of tiny blood vessels. It prepares itself to receive the fertilized ovum. If the ovum does not get fertilized, then the thick and soft inner lining of uterus is no longer needed and hence it breaks. So, the thick and soft inner lining of uterus along with the blood vessels and the dead ovum comes out of the vagina in the form of a bleeding called menstruation. Menstruation usually occurs 14 days after ovulation and usually lasts for about 3 to 5 days. After menstruation is over, the inner lining of the uterus starts building up again so that it may become ready to receive the next ovum. If the ovum does not get fertilized even now, then menstruation takes place again. This cycle of menstruation is repeated again and again in women after every 28 days. The men the menstruational cycle is controlled by hormones. Menstruation stops temporarily when the ovum gets fertilized and the woman gets pregnant. Menstruation restarts after the birth of the baby. Menstruation also stops due to the nutritional deficiency, low blood weight, uh, low body weight, stress, eating disorder, excessive weight gain, etc. Next, reproductive health. The physical and mental well-being of an individual is regarded as an individual's health. The World Health Organization has defined the reproductive health as the total well-being behavior, behavioral and emotional, physical and social aspects of adolescence. To keep the body healthy, every human being at any age need to have a diet, exercise and personal hygiene. The following are some of the me measures that girls and boys need to take. Cleanliness, have bath once or twice a day. Change the underwear daily. It should be made of cotton and washed and cleaned every day. For teenagers, the increased activity of a sweat gland sometimes enhances body odor. If uh, cleanliness is not maintained there, 
there are chances of having fungal bacterial and other infection next we need to see about physical exercises walking and playing in fresh air keeps the body fit and healthy all young boys and girls should take a walk exercise and play outdoor games physically a uh, physical activity leads to the condition of better health sound sleep and thereby mental peace mental peace promotes happiness in day to day existence so however you can concentrate in any activity you should concentrate lot of physical work please uh, you are all at the age of adolescence my dear children eight standard children you are at the age of adolescence so be busy always be busy F- do lot and lot of physical work whatever work you can do at home you do with lot of energy and enthusiastic don't stay don't simply sit at the sofa chair and watching tv and mobile phone it will drain your energy it will um, lead you to some other unneeded activity it will um, lead you some it will misguide you so please don't do that please don't stagnate do lot of physical activity concentrate in any one activity like music music means i didn't mean cine music music art drawing dance uh, any cultural activity uh, you can develop your talents you you identify your individual capacity and develop that capacity that develop that um, talent within you this is a very superb and golden period if you utilize this teen age in a proper way in a channelized way it you you will become a very successful person in your future okay so don't take a role model from any from any 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 cinema mode don't take any role model from film industry please take a pakka role model so, role model even your father and mother can be a best role model each from each person you can take one quality and practice within you okay you will be become a very good person so uh, here in this age identification crisis will arise within you so you will not you will uh, tend to disobey your parents that is not at all a matter just practice to obey your parents it will it will be a blessing for you okay nutritional need of adolescence adolescence is a stage of rapid growth and development hence a diet with proper calories and other nutrition is needed for proper growth and physical activity balanced diet is very much important during adolescence balanced diet includes proteins carbohydrates fats and vitamins is required in requisite proportions but what nowadays you are all eating just think and rewind it you are not at all interested in eating fibrous rich fibrous food lot of unhealthy fat and fried items you are intaking this is highly unhealthy it will not uh, give you a very good uh, feedback uh, very good youth okay in this adolescence age it may be uh, tasty but when you grow up uh, you cannot be very active energetic uh, when you reach your middle age so whatever food habit you in in cultivate within you will reflect in your uh 30 40 years so try to take proper diet during this time the nutritional deficiency during this period not only uh, retard the physical growth but also impact the intellectual development and may also delay sexual maturation a very good amount of protein and carbohydrate is necessary during this growth period apart from that adolescents need the following dietary components minerals since there is an increase in skeletal mass and blood volume during adolescence the body need calcium phosphorus and iron calcium intake needs to be increased to prevent osteoporosis in later life it is uh, present in milk and milk products or other equivalents iodine it helps to prevent thyroid gland related diseases iron iron builds blood and iron rich food such as green leaf vegetables jaggery meat dates fish chicken citrus indian gooseberries that is nellika and whose uh, uh, whole pulses and are good for adolescents lack of iron in the diet results in anemia to make up uh, make up for the loss of iron adolescents need to have a diet rich in iron in boys iron deficiency occurs due to uh, muscle spurt uh, whereas in girls it occurs due to menstruation cycle in addition to the 
muscular growth okay so you need lot of lot and lot of iron dear girls please try to intake lot of dates murunga kira soup a lot of iron contents try to take in the form of food otherwise you need to take it in the form of tablet it is better to take in the form of food personal hygiene for adolescents during adolescence growing children need special attention towards diet exercise and personal hygiene personal hygiene is a clear indicator of men's personality personal hygiene starts from the hair tip and end down at the toes personal hygiene habits for the adolescents are given below shower or bath daily always wash your hands before and after meals keep fingers nails clean and avoid nail polish wash your teeth and mouth before after each meal avoid touching your faces nose or mouth while preparing food avoid coughing or sneezing around food uh, close your mouth by using handkerchiefs while you cough in public places if you want to taste the food use a clean spoon change your clothes regularly and wash them cleanly especially under garments do not uh, defecate in open field use clean toilet for um, to- uh, proper toiletry uses if you are not well uh, avoid self medication and consult a doctor up to this i finish this lesson i hope you all understand the lesson all the best god bless you.